What's going on folks, this is Hero Stormwolf, and I know it has been quite a while since I've done a Skyrim Mods video. I apologize for that. Um, I will try and get back into the rotation of things with the Skyrim Mods videos, but for now I hope you guys enjoy this one. This is going to be a showcase for the Shadow Spells package. It is a collection of shadow based spells that focuses more on damage over time and debuffs. Uh, these will be scattered around Skyrim such as in traders or in caves or rewards for fighting stronger enemies. There is a collection of I believe 7 destructions, 4 alterations, 3 illusions, a couple of powers, so on and so forth. I will show off the majority of the spells and I will also leave a link in the download description down below so if you want to check it out, please feel free to do so. So starting off with the novice level spells, or excuse me, the uh, destruction spells with the shadow package. They come in the form of Shear, Shadow Bolt, Crushing Darkness, Consuming Shadows, Creeping Terror, and Shadow Ren. The first spell, Shear, is your basic novice spell. It inflicts 12 points of shadow damage each second. It additionally absorbs 4 points of health per second, but you cannot absorb health from the undead, automations, dragons, and Daedra. So as you can see it has the basic textures of the flame spell, but has a more blackish purple theme to it to kind of match the whole shadow based effect. And we will summon a bandit so you can see the damage over time. So here's your bandit outlaw. And as you can see the effects of the spell actually did start to drain him. So we'll take off God Mode here and just kind of show you the overall effects. Let him do a little bit of damage towards me. And as you can see, I started to drain a little bit of his health as he took damage. Moving on, next is Shadow Bolt. Strikes the target for 22 base shadow damage. The bolt absorbs shadows around the caster, increasing the damage for up to 60% depending on the light level. What this means is if you're in dark areas such as caves or it's night outside or you're in shadows, the overall damage of the spell will increase. But if you're in the light such as I am now, it will, also, it will decrease. This is actually one of the cool things about these perks is that they have additional environmental effects that focuses on you being in the shadows or... Um, certain perks that you may have unlocked. I'll explain a little bit more about that after I showcase the spells. But for now, let's check out Shadow Bolt. So there you go. That's the visual effects of the spell itself. And now, for, of course, to show off the damage. Does quite a bit of damage, as you can see. Moving on from there. Next up is Crushing Darkness. Summons a dark cloud of energy to crush the target. The tar crush target suffers 14 points of shadow damage every 2 seconds for 18 seconds and has a 50% chance to be staggered each tick. So this is one of the more uh, versatile spells. Not only does it do damage over time, but it can also stagger the enemy and also, I believe, weakens them. Or excuse me, it does shout, it does damage over time, but also has a chance to stagger them. As you can see, there goes the stagger. And there goes the points of damage. Very effective, very cool. Um, of course, these are bandits, so they have a greater chance of actually being affected by the staggers and the overall damage effects. Of course, the stronger enemies you fight, the lesser chance of that happening. Moving on from there, we have Consuming Shadows. Creates a shadowy patch on the ground that does 8 points of shadow flame damage per second. The target targets that die in the flames have their souls trapped. So you, here you can create a wall of dark flames here. And we'll see if we can get a bandit to trip over it. Should be fairly simple as long as it's not a archer. There you go, as you can see, trips over. Now if I had a soul gem, such as a black soul gem, I would have been able to easily capture a soul. 
these flames last quite a bit of time or last for quite a bit I believe it's up to a minute so it can really set up some cool stuff there with some of these spells that I'll show off later on moving on we have the creeping tear I believe I'm actually missing one destruction there we go so we'll move on the creeping tear in a second next up is choke and what choke does is Pulls and chokes the target, dealing 35 points of damage each second. Dragons, undead, automa and automations cannot be choked. But it lifts up the target, chokes them in the air, and does a fair amount of damage. Moving on from choke, we have... We already done Consuming Shadows, next up is Creeping Terror. This is your expert level spell. This paralyzes for 2 seconds, fears up to level 18 enemies for 10 seconds, does 12 points of damage over 15 seconds, has the chance to instantly slay the target, cannot paralyze, fear, or slay undead, automations of Daedra, control and, uh, and slay effects cannot be reapplied to targets affected by Creeping Terror DLT effect. So that means if the if a character is already affected by the Creeping Terror, you cannot affect them again. So as you see, we have the fear and the damage over time, which greatly, greatly increased as you try to run away. But as, but as shown before, you cannot actually inflict the same target twice. You still get the damage over time, but you don't get any of these special effects. Last up is the, la is the master level spell, Shadow Rend. Causes a shadow explosion around the castle to deal 100 and 20 points of shadow damage instantly and additional 15 points of damage over 15 seconds. Additionally reduces magic resistance by 50% 50 per, 50 for 15 seconds. So this is your heavy hitting magic spell. Has a very nice cool shadow effect and also cloaks the user and shadow for a few seconds. And as you can see, with any level mass or master level spell, it pretty much nukes any any character around your level a little bit lower. So moving on from the destructions, we will take a look at the illusion spells that come with this mod. So first up is the Curse of Exhaustion. A uh, little small bug here doesn't fully read out the description, but it weakens an opponent, reducing their movement speed and physical attack damage for 15 seconds. Now this does no damage. Uh, since it's an illusion spell, but this is one of the many debuffs that come with the the mod itself. No real representation, physical representation. It's pretty much a touch spell. And as you can see, he moves slightly slower than before, allowing you to maneuver around and pretty much debuff the enemy. Since we already have a bandit summon, we can move on to the Curse of Fragility. This weakens the target, reducing their armor rating by 25% and magic resistance for tw by 25% for 15 seconds. I believe you can stack multiple debuffs and multiple illusions on the same target. It doesn't say that you can't, so it requires a little bit of experimentation, but has the same shadowy effect around the target that lets you know that you affected him with the with the curse. Next up is Mind Blast, a silent spell that completely disables the target's mind for 15 seconds, works on targets up to level 15, cannot be used in combat. So I'll have to show this off on an NPC. So in order to do that, let's get rid of this fine gentleman here. And then we will head over to Riverwood and so I can show off the Mind Blast as well as the Mind Control. So here we are, we have an NPC. And he's being completely disabled. He can't move, he can't talk for 15 seconds. This is really useful for if you're trying to sneak around the area and you just stay hidden and you don't want to take off certain or you don't want to take on certain powerful enemies. Cool thing about this is that it does not trigger any type of combat. It's strictly for stealth. So I think that's really cool and very useful. 
Moving on from that, we have the Mind Control, which is one of my personal favorites of the package itself. Controls a mind up to level 24 for 14 seconds. Caster is invisible and hidden in stealth for the duration of the effect. Press Activate Key to free the target. So essentially, the Activate Key would be your um, arm and disarm button. I, I don't know the proper name, I apologize. But what this does is allows me to target pretty much any person that I want. I've now taken control of him. And now I can do as I please with this target. So there we go. Cool thing about that is that I am completely I'm completely invisible and I'm not affected by any of this. So whenever I cause damage or if I control one of the enemies, I can essentially make them fight. Pretty useful if you're trying to be very stealthy in a certain area and you want to take control of one enemy without being seen. So the two conjugation spells that you get is the Conjure Shadow Aquanach and the Conjure Umbra Keth. Here's your, your pretty much your standard. Looks cool, but your standard um, Arcanach, pretty standard. Nice cool Shadow Flames effect. I'm not sure if it uses any of the shadow spells. It is more just an overall, just retexture of the character. But it seems to only use flame spells. And then of course we have the the Conjure Umbra Keth, which, truth be told, I'm not exactly sure what this thing is supposed to be. But essentially, this is what it looks like. Again, I'm not completely sure what it's supposed to be, but terrifying nonetheless. So yeah, pretty powerful summons that you get. Um, again, you probably won't see these early on, and both these are apprentice and master, or one's apprentice, one is master level, so it's going to be quite a while before you can cast some of these. But this is just to show off a visual representation of what these spells can do. Uh, last up is some of the powers that you can acquire. They are Life Tap, Night Eye, and Shadow Form. Life Tap is pretty much you're converting your health to magic. So as you can see there, I drain some of my my health to fill up my magic. Now you can't kill yourself with the spell if you use it too many times, so be aware of that. Next up is Night Eye. Uh, we will actually make it nighttime so I can show off the last two remaining spells, which would be Night Eye and Shadow Form. Okay, so now that it's nighttime, the last two that I was going to show off is Night Eye and Shadow Form. Night Eye improves night vision, drains 80% of your magic, however. But pretty much allows you to see in, into the darkness. You press the powers button again to, de to cast it off. And the last one is Shadow Form. Shadow Form is a little bit unique. It reduces all income and damage by 20% and you're 20% harder to detect. Shadow spells heal you for 10% of the damage done, but restoration spells cost 75% more magic to cast. Drains 80% of the magic when cast. Next cast dispels the shadow form. So here is your shadow form. Nice effect. Now to show off some of the some of the debuffs that it does, I'm gonna take off God Mode. And as you can see, healing costs 19 points of magic, but it drains fairly quickly than it would usually. The cool thing about Shadow Form is that you can use it as much as you need to. You can activate it and deactivate it. There's no set cooldown time for it. But just to show off how much magic that you um that you lose when you're not in shadow form with restoration spells. 
Notice it drains a lot slower. Activate Shadow Form. And there's a significant difference on how much the the spell drains when using any healing spell. So that's something to be aware of. However, the plus side is any of the shadow spells that you cast, such as Shear or Cur or Choke or Consuming Shadow, so on and so forth, those actually heal you for 10%. So it's a good trade-off, at least in my opinion. My apologies, I did forget once one last power. It is Conjure Darkness. To surround you with shadows for 60 seconds, you are 50% harder to detect and your shadow bolts deal, a maximum, deal maximum damage. The spell cannot be applied again for 120 seconds, and the shadows quickly dissipate in bright areas. So, as you can see, there's no bright areas around here. And as you see, it surrounds the area with shadows. It makes it a little bit harder to see, but on the plus side, you get a lot of buffs and deep, or a lot of buffs to yourself. You can't be. It's harder to be seen. And you actually deal the maximum amount of shadow uh, shadow bolt damage. However, the drawback of this, if there's any bright areas, it will click quickly dissipate. And as you can see, the shadows dissipate quickly at an easy source of light. So it's something to be aware of if you're um, trying to sneak around in such in caves and things like that. Simply because a lot of caves have a lot of torches. So the shadow spell can be quickly dissipated. Also, if there's any area that's too bright, you cannot use the or the conjure shadows for. So that's something to also be aware of, or excuse me, the conjure darkness. That's something to be aware of that you cannot use if you're in bright areas or if you have a torch on you. Something that I forgot to mention is that with the shadow spell package, you also get some new perks. They'd be listed as the Dark Arts. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do this with the controller. But Shadow Spells deal more, more damage. All you have to do is increase the Novice Spell first. And I believe you actually get some towards Alterations as well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Shadow of Mastery. Grants you two Anti-Mage abilities, Detect Magic anti and Anti-Magic Weave. So on and so forth. So you can go through the perks. And you actually get new perks that do either more damage to your spells or actually mutates your spells into something else. So I thought that's something that I would mention, just in case that you didn't see it in the notes itself. So that's going to do it for this week's Skyrim Mods video. I do apologize for the long wait. I'll try and have one of these out at least once a week along with the playthrough. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. All mods that I've shown off will be in the link in the description down below. If you do decide to download the mod, please ensure to be sure to endorse it. It quickly spreads out word of the mod. It helps to get on the front page. The more people who endorse it and download it and leave comments and stuff like that. So if you really do enjoy the mod and want to support the author of the mod, please go down there, download the mod, and leave an endorsement. Um, let them know that you like the mod, so on and so forth. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Again, I want to thank you for being so patient. I apologize. I'll try not to make this a habit. Catch you in the next video.